Hi everyone and welcome to my guide for the so-called Kratos Barbarian. You might have seen some of the clips I uploaded with like the one-shot bosses and all that. It is a very fun build to play. This is something that I've been cooking up and playing for the last week or so. It has been an absolute blast. I think it's super fun and it uses the walking arsenal passive where you want to switch between different skills and different weapons all the time. And I use the Iron Maelstrom Ultimate so I can hit the entire screen and clear up massive packs in like a second or so. And then I combine this with Upheaval and Death Blow. And overall, it is like a really great package. I built this character extremely defensively, so I'm playing this on Hardcore. I have no issues whatsoever, and it just feels great all around, at least for leveling. So, so far, I can tell that it just seems to keep getting better with higher levels and I'm essentially just one-shotting pretty much anything most of the time. I have perma vulnerable, I have perma berserking, I run relatively fast and uh, I'm just really excited to see like how it will feel when it got to level 100. Now I don't think this is going to be like the best build to push higher tiers so I think after especially like tier 70, tier 80 or so it's probably going to get quite uncomfortable if you want to try to go to the highest nightmare dungeons but when it comes to farming and leveling, this is actually a pretty superb setup that even rivals some of the rogue stuff I've been doing in some cases. One of the main advantages of this build is that you have the Iron Maelstrom Ultimate and it just decimates entire screens at once. You don't have to pull enemies together, you don't have to worry about their positioning or anything, you just blow them up basically and move on. And then you just have this massive AoE from Upheaval, which actually just deals with like these large packs of monsters really well and I can most of the time one-shot bosses or two-shot bosses once I get there. At least on these like farming levels. So in general the build just deals with everything fine with any situation and there's not really ever like a moment where I feel like I can't really help myself. Ever since the Blizzard announced the Barbarian I wanted to try this walking arsenal stuff because I felt this whole concept is really amazing and really fun and well I'm glad that I made this character next after my rogues. You have like a very short cooldown on this Iron Maelstrom Ultimate there is an upgrade for it that reduces the cooldown by one second every time you swap your weapons. So essentially you do something like right click for upheaval and then one for death blow and then right click one, right click one. You do like a left click in between to get the buff. Every six seconds you want to activate each of your skills at least once. So there is a bit more like activity involved than with other builds. So if you want some somewhat laid back playstyle. This is probably not the right thing, and something like Hoda is better suited, but for the most part, this is a really great build to level, I think. So, let's jump into the setup. So, I made a planner here, and this is basically just what I leveled from level 1. It doesn't really require any crazy rare aspects or anything like that. There's one aspect in particular that you kind of want, which is the Encroaching Wrath, so this does not exist in the Codex, and this allows your Weapon Mastery skills to deal massively more damage after 3 upheavals, basically. And like this, you have like this one-shot combo for the bosses. So if you fast forward this here to the boss, you can see that most of the time I just walk in, I do my vulnerable application, I get my walking arsenal buffs, and more often than not, I just one-shot the bosses. Here it didn't quite work out, but you have two shots, and then, you know, sometimes you can just finish them off with like some other combo. So this was actually a really bad boss fight that you just saw. And the enabler for this one-shot combo is the encroaching graph aspect, so you want to try to get this, but I do find this all the time, I don't think this is rare at all. And there's a second one that interacts with Deathblow, which is the Weapon Master's aspect. So this gives your Weapon Mastery skills two charges and allows them to stun enemies, which is a kind of a nice perk. But for the most part, you want the two charges because Deathblow resets its cooldown when you kill an enemy with it. But sometimes you just don't crit, you don't have vulnerable, sometimes the enemy dodges, etc. So there are some situations where it just doesn't work. And then having the second charge is really helpful. Especially because you can replenish two charges at once if you kill two targets with one hit. Upheaval, our second main skill here, doesn't actually have an aspect. It doesn't have any special powers. There is a unique for it, which is called Hellhammer, which is awful. So don't play with that. And there is like another aspect there. You can summon an Ancient that uses Upheaval. I tried it for a little bit. But it also doesn't work here because you need to have the Call of the Ancients on your bar for that to work. And you want to play Iron Maelstrom. So upheaval just has nothing, but it's a solid skill. It stuns a little bit, it deals decent AoE damage, it gives you basically permanent berserking, so I kind of like it. I really want to play upheaval because it looks awesome. 
technically you can also play Hoda. Technically you can even play like Whirlwind or so with this if you want, but this looks a bit clunky. I think Hoda would make some sense at least, especially with uh, how busted it is right now with the bug. But I was really a fan of upheaval, so I just went into that and it works just fine. The remaining legendary items in this build are not really anything fancy, so we have a bunch of defense, a bunch of offense. I can go through them real quick, uh, starting with this one, with Disobedience. So it's just extra armor. You want to hit around 9200 armor at low 100 to have the 85% damage reduction, or even more armor if you go to higher tiers beyond that. So yeah, we already stack a lot of armor. As you can see here, I have a lot of armor nodes on the Paragons. This is, as I said, a very defensively built character. You see there's no challenging shout. Instead we have Iron Skin and we have Rattling Cry and then we have a bunch of other skills. But with the skill tree there are some defensive choices. For example, uh, the Martial Vigor and the Imposing Presence. And there's also a bit of damage reduction here from defensive stance. There's damage reduction while berserking. And then there's a lot of stuff on the Paragons and the armor. So like this, you have armor cap. You're going to be quite tanky by default. And it feels really good. Then we have the iron skin aspect here. So you get unstoppable and extra damage reduction when you press iron skin. It's a really superb defensive tool, actually. This is really powerful. So the way this works is that you want to press it when you have already lost some HP. But because you are quite tanky, it's not like you just get like blasted, one shot or something like that. We just lose a little of HP, then you press Iron Skin, and you gain a bigger barrier depending on how much life is missing, and you also heal over time. So basically, while the barrier is up, you're going to fill up your entire life pool again. This has uh, some other advantages here. So we get Unstoppable. So we have two Unstoppable skills. You can kind of like cycle them back and forth. For example, you use Iron Skin, then you use Running Cry, then you use Iron Skin again, and you have like 20 consecutive seconds of uh, Unstoppable or something like that. So it's pretty crazy. And then you can use Iron Skin again, etc. So it's just really nice, especially on Hardcore. You don't want to get CC'd and die. But in general, this just makes the gameplay really smooth. You don't stand in spider webs. You don't get knocked down or whatever. So just really good. And we also combine this with the Ghost Walker aspect here on the boots. So that's another 25% movement speed and you can walk through enemies. It's just really feels good, man, with those boots here. And again, we have to combo with the Iron Skin Unstoppable and a red ink cry. So you have this buff nearly all the time. Next up, we have the might aspect because we use our generator once every six seconds for walking arsenal anyway. We just get basically free 20% damage reduction here. Very powerful. Then we have the accelerating aspect. So I put this on the two-handed weapon because I really like the extra attack speed. Technically, you can also put other stuff there like edge masters, for example, that I have on the one-handed here. It doesn't matter all too much, but I like the extra attack speed because I felt like I was one-shotting bosses often enough that I didn't really feel like I need to include more damage. And this just makes the flow of the build a lot better because you want to swap back and forth between weapons all the time. So it just feels more roguelike, basically. <laughs> so that's what I wanted here. We have to concede it. Uh, extra damage with barrier. We get barrier from iron skin and... It's not up all the time, but it's a good enough aspect to include, I think, especially in those nuke phases. Sometimes yeah, I walk in, I, like on the boss, I press Iron Skin. I have it for the entire fight, basically, because it only lasts three seconds. So, kind of nice. Edge Masters, of course, plus 20% damage. For our high resources, we generally have no resource issues whatsoever on this build, because, well, Death Blow doesn't cost resources. In fact, it gives us Fury, and we just use upheaval here and there. We use left click once in a while. So you basically have full effect of this all the time. Then we have the Encroaching Wrath. I mentioned that. We have the Smiting. This is just extra crit, extra crowd control duration. We are not really crowd controlling this build. There are some stuns. So we have a stun from Iron Maelstrom. It's a two second stun. And you can also proc a two and a half second stun sometimes from Upheaval. In the end, the CC effect is not that crazy, but the 20% crit is relatively useful. So I put it in here. I have the Berserk Fury aspect, so we gain Fury while Berserking, which we have near permanent from just using Upheaval, and it's just like, smooths it out a little bit. Technically, this is not really required because you gain so much Fury and you spend rather little, but it smooths out the gameplay a little bit more. For example, sometimes you have like large packs of really small monsters, you don't want to go around and death blow them all, which just like Upheaval, Upheaval, Upheaval. And finally, we have the Stat Fast Berserkers aspect, this gives you a fortify. So there's not really a great way to gain fortify in this build besides this, in my opinion. I tried various things, 
but um, most of the time barbarians I know use um, the Ballbringer board that gives you 45 when you spend Fury, but because we don't really spend so much Fury, this doesn't really work too well. So I put this here on the amulet, and this has a lucky hit effect where you gain 45 while berserking, and well, we are berserking pretty much all the time. So it's rather easy to proc, and because we hit a lot of targets with upheaval, and even with death blow in some cases, with overkill for example, uh, you, you just proc this really easily. So my 45 is usually very high, so as you can see here, uh, it's basically full all the time, and I don't have like a really good roll on this on my character right now. I have a really low roll, and uh, this is going to be pretty consistent once you have this thing on the amulet. And so like this, the build has four defensive aspects, and it still clears everything super fast. Technically, if you want to be a bit more offensive, a bit more greedy, you could leave out some things. You could maybe find another source of fortify and then have the amulet slot open. Or maybe you can leave out something like disobedience and just stack more percent armor on your gear. If you don't go to very high tiers at least, and this can also work so that you have the armor cap. And then you can move steadfast to something else, for example. So there are some options to move this around if you want to make this even faster. But I felt like I didn't need any more damage, so I did this combo. Let's talk about the item stats real quick. So obviously you want to have upheaval and death blow ranks on your gloves and your helm. You want cooldown reduction, movement speed. So these are like just the typical, you know, all round stats that you want. And then the typical crit, crit, vulnerable. So for example, the ring should look like this. And your weapons also, they should have crit and vulnerable like that. You can stack a bunch of strength. You can stack a bunch of all stats on your weapons. And then stuff like close damage is very powerful. You don't really want core skill damage because your core skill upheaval is just one source of damage. So if you can, you want to get close. Uh, ultimate skill damage is really weak, so don't go for that. It, yeah, while we use Iron Maelstrom and it actually does damage here, it's just not a good stat. So avoid that. So just go for the typical crit, attack speed, vulnerable, and the ranks basically. On the amulet, we have the heavy handed passive. So I set this up to use uh, the sword for upheaval and then the hammer for death blow. You can also swap it around depending on your liking. But both of these are two handed weapons and we get extra critical strike damage here. So that you have the really big bonks like that. So if you can get an amulet with this passive, that's the best. There are some other also kind of useful passives that work. But I think this is the best choice here. Then we have damage reduction stats, especially your chest and your pants. You want to stack damage reduction like all the way. So there's damage reduction on close, pure damage reduction, damage reduction while fortified, distant damage reduction, damage reduction from bleeding. So barbarians have a lot of options here and basically any combination of high rolls of these stats is what you're looking for on those two pieces. This is very important for survival in general, not just for this build. You always want to have really defensive chest and pants. So make sure you focus on these. They will keep you alive. And then we have boots, movement speed, movement speed on lead kill, berserking duration, fortified generation. This is like a really insane combo of stats if you can get something like that. I would say that you definitely want normal movement speed. You definitely want the maximum evade charges and then whatever else you can get. Just try to slowly get more and more of these stats here. You can stack a little bit of extra life. So for example, as you can see here, we have maximum life on the rings. So there's not really any other crazy stats to gain here anyway. So just crit, crit, wall and life. That's like the perfect ring in my opinion. The maximum life is really helpful to make you more tanky. And on the helm, for example, I also have uh, life on kill. So this build doesn't really have any like passive healing or something like that. For example, I know a lot of builds also run Invigorating Fury. It just like, passively heals you, but I don't do that. So I have life on kill. I also played without it. It's fine. But sometimes you have to press your potion and sometimes you have to press your iron skin to heal yourself. So you do have a lot of healing if you need it. And you generally don't take very much damage. But it just smooths it out a bit of the life on kill. So I put it there. While we're at it, I also want to talk about the setup with overkill. So this is this unique maze here that buffs death blow. And it gives you a shock wave that does up to 38% of the base damage. So the way this works is that you have the normal death blow effect. And then in addition to that, you get a second hit that does 38% damage. So I tried this out and while this is relatively nice, you also have to see there are some disadvantages. So first of all, you lose a two-handed aspect and you also lose really, really good stats. Like the stats on this thing are actually pretty bad. Overpower does basically nothing. The physical damage is kind of okay. Damage to injured is kind of whatever. And the crit to injured is also kind of whatever because generally you just want to one-shot everything. But there are some fights that are lasting a little bit longer 
and then it helps you to just finish enemies off, so it's kind of okay. But for the most part, you have to swap around your aspects a little bit. So as I mentioned earlier, we have the accelerating here on the two-handed, and you definitely don't want to lose accelerating entirely. So in this overkill setup, I moved it to the ring instead of the gain fury while berserking. So the berserk fury aspect is replaced with the accelerating, so we still have a bit of attack speed, and then you have overkill. So there are some pros and cons for both these setups. From what I can tell, the overall speed and air clear is a bit better with the overkill because you can just like death blow a lot more freely. And basically the idea is that you replace some of your upheaval casts with more death blow casts for AoE damage. So most of the time I use upheaval just like into a pack once. So I get berserking and I make everything vulnerable with exploit glyph. And then I overkill death blow like boom, 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 boom. And everything is cleared up and I go to the next pack. While regularly without overkill, I focus a bit more on upheaval casts. So I would use this maybe more back and forth and not just like three death blows in a row or something like that. But it would be like upheaval, death blow, upheaval, upheaval, death blow, something like that. So I focus a bit more on AoE damage with this skill instead because you have more fury and because the death blow doesn't have this AoE coverage. I do have to say though, the overkill maze feels really good despite the loss of the stats, especially when you're doing easy farming content, leveling, etc where you generally just kill everything with this wave, even even if it's really low damage. So I uh, kind of like this. Let's talk about the skill tree here. So we have Lunging Strike as our basic attack. Technically, you can use any of the others as well. So Flake gives you some damage reduction and bleed and vulnerable and stuff. And Frenzy gives you more damage reduction and attack speed. But I really like the mini teleports here. It just makes the gameplay feel more smooth. It also allows to bleed enemies. So you have some multipliers from bleeding, for example. Kind of nice. Then we have upheaval, of course. We have the violent upheaval for the berserking, and it also can stun a little bit. Then we have one point rending cry, gives us a bit more fortify and unstoppable, really good. And we have the iron skin also with one point, which gives us uh, extra barrier and then the healing. So these are the defensive choices here. Uh, we don't really need challenging shout because we just have so much defense on this build already, like built in. You're also gonna see it in the paragraphs in a second. This damage reduction is actually not really required, I think. But I also added these defensive passives here, Imposing Presence and Martial Vigor. So this is part of the reason why there is no challenging shout. It's just like passive defense, so to say. We have the movement speed, very nice. We have the damage reduction from Berserking. And then we go down here to a Death Blow. So you want to maximize Death Blow, 5 points. We get 100% extra damage against bosses. So that's how you get the big bonks. And then we have the extra Fury. We have a bunch of passives here. There's Pit Fighter for increased damage. We have No Mercy for crit. And then there's Exposed Vulnerability. This is really powerful passive. So it allows you to make enemies vulnerable after using a Weapon Mastery skill and then a follow-up core skill. So Weapon Mastery is our Death Blow and then Upheaval is our core skill. So effectively, you can do the combo Death Blow, Upheaval and you make enemies vulnerable for 3 seconds. And then you can do whatever you want, attack them a little bit and then you do this again. And like this, you have effectively near permanent vulnerable in almost every single fight. Especially if you combine this with the exploit glyph, which comes online really early in this build. So we have this here directly on the first paragon board that we attach. Exploit glyph, three seconds vulnerable for free. So you do like one upheaval into a pack, everything is vulnerable. And if those three seconds are not enough, you just like death blow around a little bit, another upheaval, and everything is vulnerable again. And you can do the same combo on the bosses, etc. We have one point in hamstring for the slow, so if you have any kind of damage to crowd controlled enemies, damage to slowed enemies, you can apply this and you have a very easy enabler here. You have a bunch of fortified uh, synergies, so fixed gain is kind of whatever, but we have 12% damage from counter offensive and we have 4% damage reduction from defensive stance. Uh, technically, you don't really need hamstring, so eventually when you don't have any crowd control bonuses anymore, you could actually just put the one point there and you have this maxed out. And lastly, down here, we have Iron Maelstrom. This is our ultimate. So this is a free step attack. When you use this, you will first use a two-handed bludgeoning weapon and do like a slam in the ground in front of you that stuns everything. Then you do a follow-up like frontal cone sweep with your two-handed slashing weapon that also applies a pretty big bleed. And then you have like the really big swirl. There's like the Kratos uh, move basically where you have your chains on your dual wield weapons, and then you have like this massive circular AOE. So I can show this a bit more in detail in action here. So you see that when I press two, this is the ultimate, it will change my entire skill bar 
to only Iron Maelstrom, so you cannot use the other skills anymore. And then you have to do this three step combo. Between every step, there are 10 seconds where you have a buff. You see this here, this is the buff. And if this buff runs out, you will also revert back to your normal state and you can use all of your skills again. So you have 10 seconds to use all this stuff. And generally, you want to try to hit the main targets, like the elites in this pool, for example, with your first and second sweep. And then the third one will just clean up everything around it automatically. So you see this here, I target the elites here on the left. Then we do the swipe, does the second attack. And then we do the big combo here. And basically everything just dies. And they recently buffed Iron Maelstrom. It's only 45 seconds base cooldown now. And it also gains 30% crit and 40% extra crit damage multiplicatively. So it has a really high damage output from that. And you also have the cooldown reduction by one second every time you swap weapons. And obviously this is combined with the walking arsenal. You gain 10% extra damage for each different weapon type you use. So you have 30% extra. I'm not actually 100% sure if they multiply or if they add together. And then when all of them are active, you get another 15% extra. So it says X, so they might actually all multiply and it might be a bit more than 45%. Now, while we add it, let's talk about the arsenal skill selection a little bit. So when you open your skill tab in game, you can scroll down on individual skills and you can choose which weapon that skill will use. So in case you're not aware of this, you see here the arsenal selection and it says my two-handed sword. And then you can press the middle mouse button and you can rotate through it. So in my case, what I did is I put my slashing weapon on the upheaval. I put the bludgeoning weapon on a death blow, and then I have the dual wield on the lunge. So the dual weapons are usually the ones that I don't really care about. They're mostly stat sticks. I'm not trying to deal damage with lunge very much. It's all about getting a really big sword and a really big bonk weapon. So recently I found the overkill and I've been experimenting with this. And another maze that I was using is like this. This is like nearly perfect, I guess, with the all stats. Vulnerable, crit. The berserking could be close damage or so, or could be strength. Both of that would be fine, but this is a really good weapon here, so this is what it should look like. In my case, I have to sort an upheaval, so I can apply the bleed from the expertise. So it gives you a bleed that just helps you with extra modifiers, like damage reduction from bleeding enemies, for example. And then we have the two-handed mace on death blow, so that, well, you gain a bit of fury, it's kind of whatever. But you also have this 50% critical strike damage to stun and vulnerable enemies while berserking. So we are basically always berserking. We always have everything vulnerable. So we have even bigger bonks. And if you have a sword equipped, first of all, you have the best implicit stat, which is critical strike damage. No other weapon really comes close to that. And this allows you to get bleeding. And you can use 200x expertise as the technique slot. So with 200x, you get another 15% vulnerable damage multiplicatively. Let's talk about a Paragon setup here. So we have a six board setup. And we mostly go for glyphs in this. Like most of the legendary nodes and barbarians are pretty awful in my opinion. The only one that you do pick up is here quite late, the Carnage for a bit of extra attack speed. But that's about it. Everything else is just based around glyphs and maybe a few rare nodes on the way. So we start here on the starting board. We pick up a bunch of stuff and we have the Might Glyph. Gives you extra damage with two-handed weapons. So both our main skills use two-handed weapons. We buff the magic nodes, so we pick them all up. Then we have the first bot that we attach here, which is Warbringer. We don't use the legendary node compared to most other barbarian builds because we don't spend enough fury to really gain the effect. And as I mentioned, we have another solution for Fortify. So we just put the Exploit Glove here, gives us extra vulnerable damage, which is a very powerful stat. And we have the additional bonus that gives us vulnerable for three seconds the first time we attack an enemy. So this is very nice. You just upheaval into a pack, everything is vulnerable, and then you just clean up. And if something survives, you can do the combo again with death blow plus upheaval, make everything vulnerable again. So this is how that works. Then we move on to the decimator board. Again, we don't pick up a legendary, we just go for the glyph. We have uh, vulnerable damage there and vulnerable damage reduction. We put on daunting glyph for extra fortify synergy. It's a very nice combo. Then we have the weapons master board with blood feeder. So you want to bleed enemies with the sword bonus. So when you upheaval them or when you lunge, you bleed them. And you have this effect, you get 5% extra crit, which is a relatively nice secondary effect. Because most of the time, just critting is enough to just like basically one-shot anything. So we want to try to make that more consistent, even if the primary effect is not really too powerful. So you put it here with only 39 decks, just to get a bit of extra elite damage. We pick up some rare nodes, he has Hunter Killer, Elite Damage, and Movement Speed on Killing Elites. Very cool. 
and we have brute for attack speed and physical damage. It's right here, so I just included it. Then we have the Carnage Ward with Territorial Glyph. This is a close damage and close damage reduction. Very good. We have even more close damage here, direct action here, some extra damage there. We gain Berserking Duration. This is just to smooth out the playstyle a little bit. You don't have to upheaval all that much, and you still have the Berserking buffs. We have the Carnage here for extra attack speed and a bit more damage on the way out. And here comes the final board where we put Mortal Draw. And we only pick up this one bigger uh, rare note for extra damage reduction. So Mortal Draw is a very interesting glyph. Gives you extra damage when you swap to a new weapon. And well, we are mostly swapping almost every single time. So this is very powerful. It has a very high scaling number and has an interesting secondary effect. It gives you 80% chance to crit. And this 80% chance to crit is actually a second roll, so to say. So for example, you try to attack and you don't crit, and then you have a second chance of 18% to get a crit anyway. So that's how it works. So you may notice that I left out the Wrath Glyph that gives you extra crit damage for core skills, but I figured it's not really that required. Right now I'm not running with it. I also don't need a secondary effect for the extra Fury because we just get Fury from Death Blow, so it doesn't really matter. And we also don't use only core skills. I figured this is not really that strong. And instead, I included the Blood Feeder here. But if you want to have the crit damage for your upheaval, you can replace Blood Feeder. You can use the Raft Glyph, and you also get more Fury that way. Either way, this is it for this build guide. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm having a blast with this build. I'm definitely intending to get this all the way to level 100. And then we'll see what we can do on level 100. As I said, it's probably not really like the best like push build because yeah, you know, death blow just only really works when you just decimate everything basically. But we'll see what we can do. For now, this is what we got. I'll keep you guys updated if there's any big changes. And otherwise, hope you like it and see you guys next time.